good morning everyone uh, this is the first time i am coming to patna the first thing i am very happy thing i heard is they are not charging for robotics here so i thought i'll get my all my patients here we are charging 1 lakh extra in hyderabad so i was a little happy and uh, thanks for the opportunity ashish sir and dr guruva reddy for this i am working with sanchem for the past 8 years so this first time patna this small slide about me so i do both hips and knees and scopy also fortunately i have been able to participate more than 10000 joints so i have become recently proctor for striker and cubis also i train the i certify surgeons and my wife is a pain physician so all my painful patients are gone because of her so I'm, my life has become little easy uh, so recently i have started now just now the most interesting fact that is i have started a rehab and transitional care center which is uh, largest in south india so i'm happy that a talk before me was that one so coming to our uh, topic yeah the traditional uh, poly inserts are uh, cruciate retaining or uh, post stabilized and a deep dish or ultra congruent or cs poly are developed later so what is better there is a lot of debate and there are lot of literature on that so what's the constraint constraint is where the implant design provides the stability uh, in the absence or presence of a soft tissue envelope which is compromised so this is the levels of constraint uh, starting with uh, pcl retaining it's the least constraint and the pcl substituting uh, then anti stabilized or cs and the next is vvc varus valgus constraint and the last one is a linked hinge where our uh, cruciates are compromised yeah this is this uh, cruciate retaining where there is a flat posterior and ultra congruent or cs have a anterior uh, co constraint there and the ps with post and cam so coming to cruciate retaining it's a round on flat bearing a minimal bone resection uh, less noise that in the previous designs probably but now i think the implants are well designed we don't have any noise and no risk of any post impingement uh, the disadvantage is, is it's less forgiving unless you know how to balance these knees in a tight flexion gap they are difficult to balance and if it's a compromised pcl at a later stage then it's unpredictable kinematics and theoretically less flexion compared to ps design that's why it gave a little more slope to accommodate our tight flexion gaps here and uh, post stabilized is a cam and post mechanism superior knee flexion because of a uh, uh, predictable roll back and uh, less anterior posterior lax even compared to cruciate uh, substituting or ultra congruent more knee noise because they have a box uh, here and uh, the patella sliding or gliding through the box might be an issue in some uh, designs and loss of proprioception is still debatable and uh, more bone sacrifice especially i think in depew and strikers yes in small sizes ultra congruent deep dish i think uh, we have moved uh, to especially in sunshine we operate even robotics all in cs we hardly do ps or ts so very minimal bone resection and no risk of impingement uh, as if it's balanced well not, nothing like it but theoretically risk of limbal flexion which i haven't seen in my clinical practice and my personal uh, non conventional uh, implant is buccal papas which i do in all my cases which is a gap balancing technique and uh, this pcl dictates a femoral roll back it's important pcl retention does well with flat inserts allowing roll back and uh, ultra congruent inserts can be used with or without Uh, PCL without difference in outcomes. The kinematic conflict happens if there is a posterior congruency also. That's why we use a flat back in uh, cruciate retaining. And coming to VVC, I think it uh, is the next constant to PS. It has a tall uh, tibial post and a deep femoral box. Uh, it has better stability when compared to PS. And the examples are in, in striker it is TS. Uh, we use it very less in our primary scenarios unless there is a chronic uh, valgus or val uh, varus knees where the lateral laxity cannot be addressed or medial there is some compromise yeah this is how uh, ps and vvc uh, design looks in the uh, inside the box so is a standard uh, post in a ps knee uh, medial lateral stability is less when compared to vvc because in a vvc it acts like internal splint and it's snugly fit and coming to hinge it's in uh, highly constrained uh, devices uh, with an axial con connecting the tibial and femoral components to decrease the overall amount constraint they permit a rotation of tibial bearing so that the uh, longevity is there uh, this is used uh, mostly in revision scenarios or uh, post surgery arthritis where the cruciates are compromised 
Yeah, coming to outcomes, yeah, this is a systemic uh, review and meta-analysis where 19 studies are included and uh, there is no, you, uh, ultra congruent has better scores in only one study, but there's no difference in ROM or stability or any functional outcomes. And this is also one other paper, uh, ultra congruent versus uh, PS or uh, CS. There is also nothing, uh, both uh, results are comparative, there is no difference in this. And next, post stabilized versus cruciate retaining, this is also a meta-analysis, there is also no clinical um, uh, relevant dissimilarities or no statistical significant in complications or uh, PROMs. So these are the Indian papers, probably we are differently built. So, so this is a prospective single surgeon RCT, here also there is no differences between ultra congruent or cruciate retaining in gait analysis. And ultra congruent because of a bone preserving this thing, there is short, less uh, shortcomings is observed. And this is one more paper comparing the functional outcomes, femoral rollback and uh, sagittal stability of anti stabilized West PS. This is also a meta-analysis and system systematic review. Here also no difference in uh, functional outcome. And uh, this is also an equivalent outcomes of ultra congruent and uh, CR inserts. So there is a 72% lesser chance of revision or change of insert uh, for post-operative instability in knees with UC, means ultra congruent or CS. So surgeons can use any insert type based on their training and comfort. So this is an Australian registry. There is an equal uh, survivorship out of 65,000 knees. Uh, half are PS and uh, one fifth are UC and uh, one fourth are CR. So they haven't seen any increased uh, revisions in ultra congruent. In fact, they are lower than uh, PS inset. So the simple uh, summary of the literature is no difference in uh, clinical outcomes. PS may have better flexion range and who are trained in PS can sleep better, but uh, joint perception with or without PCL is very subject to comparable in most studies. Ultra congruent is equivalent result as CR or PS. Long term survivorship is comparable in all designs. So as an institute, our experience, uh, so we use over uh, 12 designs. Probably after capping, we have come down to six or seven designs we're using in our daily practice. So. Mostly we use CR, PS, use uh, ultra congruent, medial pivot. Now dual pivot we are not using, but mobile bearing, buccal papas, medial pivot. Now biorad has come with it. And ultra congruent acid, buccal papas, CR we use it in uh, max and uh, DPU, PS in striker and DPU. So we had uh, excellent outcomes in all our practice and probably proper alignment and balancing will give excellent outcomes rather than the design. Probably the selection of the patient is more important. Uh, proper exceptional limital flexion probably in our practice we found it's very theoretical because we had excellent outcomes. This is a case, uh, eight years of follow-up. This is a right knee, microport knee. This is a medial uh, pivot, probably it's coming back to India now. Eight years follow-up and uh, she is excellent outcomes after eight years. And this is also ten years follow-up. This is also a mic right microport knee, medial pivot knee. And he's a doctor, patient is a doctor by himself. So, no issues, he's walking all fine. And this is CR knee, 14 years follow up. And this is also doing excellent. And this is my favorite knee, Bikil Papas, 11 years follow up and uh, ultra congruent mobile bearing. They're also doing well. So, our 10 commandments which we follow in uh, any case, irrespective of its conventional or robotic case. No coronal malalignment, no sagittal deformity with knee in extension. Now probably we are accepting some kinematic and functional alignments, so probably second statement uh, will differ. Uh, balancing knee in extension, no opening, this is not compromised, no opening in varus or valgus stress. No mid flexion instability, we have to keep the ball of the heel in your palm and SSA 30, 60 and 90. And optimal femorotibial uh, tracking and pull off test should be negative, the poly should not come more than one third of it. Lift off should be negative if it's positive, it's a posterior tightness. Optimal femoral rollback, rectangular and equal flexion extension gaps and watertight closure of knee orthotomy. These, every case we follow, we train the fellows to see all the points. We, in fact, record some videos for most of the cases, whether we are following all these or not. And uh, take home message would be implant choices, surgeon's choice and highly dependent on their training. 
currently available processes have been developed with decades of research. Whether it's a CR, PS, or UC does not really matter so much. And TS and hinge have different indications. Properly balancing the knee is vital for optimal outcomes on survivorship. Avoid imbalance, malnutrition, and malalignment. Patient satisfaction is good with any implant design with a well-balanced knee, considering the differences in the design. Thank you. Thank you for patient listening. Any questions? Yeah, thank you.